When you donate your body to science, what does science do with it? Howdy everyone, Trace here for D News at the Discovery Museum in Times Square in New York City where these cool bodies are on display for something called Body World's Pulse. It's their new exhibit. It's brought to you by Dr. Gunther von Hagens. And these are really lifelike and they're all because of donated bodies. Body Worlds is the ultimate in anatomical study because each individual cell is preserved in a layer of silicone, but without the people who donated these bodies, this wouldn't even be here. When you donate your body to science, you're giving up your rights to funerals, burials, cremations, or any of that other stuff we associate with death. Because when you die, your body's whisked away for preservation because scientists are worried about decomposition. In a traditional body donation, you don't get your body back. When the medical research firm or university or hospital is done with it, they'll dispose it in a manner legal in the state that they're in, which often ends up being what's left of you goes into a mass grave like this one, which has 600 people in it. But it does have a headstone that says, thank you for helping further medical research. Also in traditional body donation, you can't have had a communicable disease like HIV because that would be dangerous to the researchers. You can't have had amputations or other disabilities because they don't need that in medical research. You can't weigh more than 250 pounds. The Institute for Plastinization, they're a little different because they actually seek that stuff out. I'm here with the curator, Angelina Wally, and uh, so have you ever touched the, the plastine? Of course, I was involved for many years in the process. Uh, I'm a physician by training and I used to work with my husband who is the inventor of the technology. Uh, before they're cured, are they like squishy or, or is because they're still pliable, right? Actually, the plastination process uh, that is behind it that permanently preserves these specimens, uh, it involves vacuum. Mm -hmm. And then in vacuum, we exchange a tissue water against a polymer like silicone rubber. Once we take it out from the silicone bar, they are very flexible. Um, and uh, it's then uh, the moment that we put the specimen in a beautiful pose and make sure that all the anatomical structures are at the right place. And then we cure it by means of a special gas. And that renders the specimen dry, orderless, uh, you can grasp them and um, they are pretty firm. The exhibition offers really a great, great opportunity and even if you come with hesitation because the Hollywood industry has created this picture inside you that anatomy is ugly, it's smelly, it's something that you better hide in the dark. No, it's a completely different experience that you will have. So I was really concerned about this exhibit because I get really uncomfortable around anatomy, but they're really neat. And I find myself kind of staring into the body and thinking, all this stuff is in me? That is so cool. So what do you think? Would you rather have traditional organ donation? Maybe a traditional body donation? Would you want to be buried or cremated like normal people? Or maybe you could just go with plastination, although, you know, you're going to be in less than your birthday suit in front of a lot of people. So make sure you keep that in mind. Tweet at us at DNews if you visit the exhibit in the next year or more. And make sure you keep watching us twice a day. I'm Trace. Catch you later.